Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and today, at long last, I'm going to be doing the wishlist video for Call of Duty 2020. Now, if you missed yesterday's video, then allow me to quickly summarize it. The latest leaks and rumors are suggesting that tomorrow, on August 5th, the game is going to be announced in some capacity, and then on August 6th, we're going to get reveal trailers for the campaign as well as multiplayer during the PlayStation State of Play event. Now, as always, when it comes to leaks and rumors, take everything with a pinch of salt. It's entirely possible that nothing is going to be announced this week, but on the off chance that the reveal actually is tomorrow, I figured today would be the perfect time to sit down and discuss everything that I would like to see within the game, along with everything that I would not like to see within the game. One thing I would like to mention here before we get too far into the video is that today Activision had their investors report and in there they basically answered a question from one of their investors about how they're going to reveal the next Call of Duty title and while they did try to dodge the question a little bit they did say that Warzone is a great place to tell stories and that that's made them rethink how they would like to reveal Call of Duty 2020 which basically confirms that COD 2020 is going to be announced in some capacity via Warzone which lines up with the previous leaks that tomorrow we could be learning more about the game but with that out of the way ladies and gentlemen let's go ahead and jump right into the video here based on what we know so far it appears that black ops cold war is going to be like a mix of black ops 2 and black ops 4 the rumors are suggesting that we're going to have 150 base health but healing is going to be automatic instead of manual and i'm personally all for this i've always been a big fan of slow time to kill in the call of duty franchise because it rewards movement and gun skill over camping and hiding and i think after fans have played a full year of modern Warfare 2019, a slow time to kill is going to be a welcome change of pace for a lot of players. The leaks are also suggesting that map design is going to be a bit more like we've seen from Treyarch in the past, right? No doors like in Modern Warfare 2019, traditional three-lane style maps. Basically, just picture the map design from Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, and Black Ops 4. That's basically what we can expect with COD 2020, according to the rumors, and I'm personally pretty excited about that. The minimap is also said to be going back to normal, which is great. So, from a pure gameplay perspective, from what we've learned so far, it sounds like Black Ops Cold War is going to be exactly what I hope to see. My biggest complaints regarding Modern Warfare 2019 involve the safe space map design as well as the insanely fast time to kill, and both of these issues seem like they're going to be addressed with Black Ops Cold War. Now, the other major issue I have with Modern Warfare 2019 is the lack of a proper Dead Silence perk. It's available as a field upgrade, but obviously you don't have your field upgrade all the time, and because because of how loud the footsteps are in that game, moving is essentially punished because the maps are already designed for you to camp on with so many doors and windows everywhere, and on top of that, enemy players can hear your footsteps from a mile away because you don't have Dead Silence up all the time like you could in previous Call of Duty titles. So I hope that Dead Silence is a perk with COD 2020. Unfortunately, the leaks are suggesting that Dead Silence will not be a perk within Black Ops Cold War, and this is something I feel as though should be changed as soon as possible should that turn out out to be true. Dead Silence is a staple perk in the Call of Duty franchise, and it allows players to set up their class and allow them to rush if they play smart, and it's also an essential perk for game modes like Free For All and Search and Destroy, so if the beta does release without a Dead Silence perk, that will be one of the first bits of constructive feedback I'll discuss in my review videos, but yeah, I'm really hoping that Dead Silence returns within Call of Duty 2020. It's one of my favorite perks in the Call of Duty franchise, and the idea that it may not be returning is definitely cause for concern. Now next up, since we're playing Black Ops 4 in this video, I figure I should discuss the idea of Specialist, right? While I personally like the idea of Specialist in the Call of Duty franchise, I think they add a lot to the game, the leaks are suggesting that Specialist will not be returning, and rather, the Operator system from Modern Warfare 2019 is going to be coming back. For me personally, I can go either way. I like Specialist. I know that's not a very popular opinion at this day and age, but I like Specialist, but I've also played the Call of Duty franchise for a decade before Specialist were even a thing, so I can honestly go either way. I feel like the vast majority of the player base think the specialists are pretty annoying, so it's probably for the best that they don't return, but again, I could honestly go either way with Black Ops Cold War. Now, when it comes to the kill streaks, I feel like score streaks should return as they encourage objective play. 
but balancing needs to be in place so that the highest streaks don't require an obscene amount of score to get. Score streaks themselves should be insanely powerful. They should be really good. They should be worth actually obtaining because one of the big reasons why games like Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 1, Modern Warfare 3, and Black Ops 2 were so popular was because of the streaks that the games had and how rewarding they were. But with that being said, score streaks absolutely need to be converted into kill streaks in kill dependent game modes like free for all, team deathmatch, and maybe even search and destroy. This seems like such a simple concept, but for some reason, the Call of Duty developers always seem to skip this every single year. There is no reason why a simple UAV should be a 5 kill streak or even a 6 kill streak in game modes like Team Deathmatch just because the streaks themselves are tuned for objective game modes. If there's no objective in the game mode that you're playing and the only point of the match is for you to get kills, then score streaks should have a set kill streak value tied to them while playing in those kill dependent modes. Again, like Team Deathmatch, Free For All, and and possibly even search and destroy. In all other game modes like kill confirm, domination, hardpoint, and so on, score streaks should be the way to go. They should be earned by a score. It's really as simple as that. Now moving along here, I feel like I've covered pretty much everything when it comes to core gameplay. I basically want a mix of Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, and Black Ops 4 style gameplay, but as we all know, it's the underlying systems that are in the game that really help it transcend from a good Call of Duty title to a great Call of Duty title. So let's go ahead and talk about monetization. In short here guys, I feel as though they should just copy and paste the entire system from Modern Warfare 2019. You guys know me, I am very critical of Modern Warfare 2019, but one thing I really love about that game is the monetization system. The idea of releasing all DLC maps and all seasons at the exact same time for every single platform for free is amazing. I'm a big fan of that, I'm a big fan of the Battle Pass system, I like the idea of earning time sensitive cosmetic rewards within a given season, and if spending $10 on an optional battle pass with each season is what keeps supply drops and season passes and exclusivity in general out of the Call of Duty franchise, then I think that's a more than fair price to pay for those of us who do decide to buy the cosmetic only battle pass. The best part about the battle pass also in my opinion is with each new season, new DLC weapons are released and they're unlocked via free tiers on the battle pass, so you don't even have to drop the 10 bucks on the battle pass if you just want the new weapons, all you have to do is play the game during the season or you can choose to purchase the weapons by skipping ahead and buying tiers, but either way, the DLC guns that we see in Modern Warfare 2019 are some of the most accessible in the history of the Call of Duty franchise, and I want that to return for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Another great aspect of the system is even after a season ends and the battle pass goes away, the weapons that were added can be earned via challenges, so basically the system we have in Modern Warfare 2019 is pretty much perfect in my own personal opinion, and that's what I want to see with the next Call of Duty game. Now if they do decide to bring back the idea of seasons for Black Ops Cold War, I hope that the officer rank leveling system goes away entirely and we go back to a proper prestige system with Master Prestige and 1000 levels of Master Prestige, but with that being being said, I feel as though the officer rank challenges should return in one way or another with a simple revamp. Doing a ton of challenges within a given season to get a reward is a great idea. I just hope that the rewards themselves are a bit better than simply just getting an animated emblem. Having time sensitive cosmetic rewards is a great idea in my opinion. So for example, have specific weapon variants and camos that you can get for doing challenges in season one of Black Ops Cold War that can no longer be obtained after that season is over. This gives players an incentive to play the game a lot, especially when it first comes out or when a new season drops, and it also gives fans a reason to engage in lots of different kinds of content so they can complete all the different challenges, but with that being said, a proper challenge system has to return as well. What I would like to see is basically seasonal challenges that can be completed completely separately from the game's overall challenges, and the rewards for completing the overall challenges have to be something that is obscenely good. I've brought up many times here in the channel, but I did 100% of the multiplayer challenges in Black Ops 4. The reason why I bring it up is because that's the only time I've ever done that in the Call of Duty game. And for those who don't know, the only reward for doing literally every challenge in the Black Ops 4 multiplayer is this animated calling card. 
which doesn't even look all that good. And keep in mind, Black Ops 4 is a game that has hundreds and hundreds of animated calling cards. So there's nothing special about this. If I'm in a pregame lobby and somebody sees that calling card, they probably have no idea what it even really means. They think it's just another supply drop calling card like all the others. That's a pretty terrible reward for doing 100% of the game's challenges. Now, just off the top of my head here, I'm trying to come up with some ideas. If they do decide to bring back the operator system for Modern Warfare, perhaps have Frank Woods be an operator that you can unlock for completing all of the game's multiplayer challenges. And on top of that, throw in some weapon variants from like Black Ops 1 or maybe even Black Ops 2 or World at War. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the reward systems in Call of Duty have been really bad for a long time. I mean, basically, you have Dark Matter to go for and I guess Master Prestige, kind of. But aside from that, like what really are the reward systems within a Call of Duty game? there really aren't any, and so I feel as though with Call of Duty 2020, there needs to be a lot of prestigious rewards for doing all the challenges, completing Dark Matter, and of course, prestiging. There should be a lot of impressive and unique rewards for getting Prestige Master, and then every 100 levels of Prestige Master on top of that, sort of similar to what we saw back in Call of Duty World War II with their Master Prestige rewards. There needs to be a robust and interactive combat record like we saw back in the original Black Ops, and just basically in general, there needs to be a lot of things for fans to do in the game that offer tangible, worthwhile rewards. The core gameplay of Call of Duty is fun. There's a reason why we buy the game every single year. So because of that, there needs to be more to do in the game that captures our interest, aside from just playing Domination, for example, and capturing flags, getting kills, and trying to win matches. There needs to be a lot of underlying systems that offer players rewards for doing different things within the game. And going back to it, if they do bring back operators, for example, from Modern Warfare, having Frank Woods be the guy you get for doing 100% of the multiplayer challenges would be awesome. Make it known that that's the skin that you get for having done all the challenges. So when you're playing the game and people see your operators, Frank Woods, they'll realize right away, they'll instinctively know like, holy crap, this guy actually did all the challenges. That would be pretty cool. There needs to be a lot of things like that in the game that you can show off for actually engaging with the game and sinking a bunch of time into it as compared to just simply sinking a lot of money into it. Another great example I can give is I love how Treyarch implemented cross mode rewards within Black Ops 4. So for example, in Black out Battle Royale, players could find specific items on the map and complete some pretty difficult challenges to unlock a numbered skin for each specialist in the game. These skins could be used in Blackout as well as multiplayer, and anyone who watches my streams over on Twitch knows that I love this system. I've unlocked every single number skin for every specialist in the game, and I use them while I play multiplayer, and I got them in Blackout. I love that cross progression between two different game modes. And on top of that, they also had a system where you could unlock camos and zombies as as well as Blackout, and then use those camos in multiplayer, that's a really good idea, and that's something that should return within Call of Duty 2020. Now, speaking of zombies, I'm hoping for two or three maps on disc at launch, with, of course, a robust DLC season that adds a bunch of new maps periodically throughout the year. I don't have too much to say about zombies because I'm not a massive zombies player, but I do hope for a lot of maps. I want there to be a robust leveling and stat tracking system, and, of course, tangible and worthwhile rewards for leveling up, prestiging, completing challenges, and, of course, completing Easter eggs. Now, when it comes to the campaign, again, I don't really have too much to say there. I'm interested in the Black Ops universe, obviously. I'm interested to see where the story is going to go. I hope it's good. That's pretty much all I can say. I hope the story is interesting. But going back to multiplayer here, there needs to be a lot of content. There has to be a lot of content. I feel like I'm harping on the same thing over and over here, but at launch, I would like to see 12 original multiplayer maps and four multiplayer map remakes right from the very beginning. Now that may sound like a lot, but back in the day, keep in mind, it was not uncommon whatsoever for games to release with anywhere from 14 to 16 multiplayer maps, but for some reason, they've kind of done away with that. In recent years, as you guys know, they basically give us nine or 10 multiplayer maps at launch so that they can space out all the other maps as DLC updates throughout the entire year. I don't want that to happen with Call of Duty 2020. I want 16 maps at launch, again, 12 originals, four remakes, make it happen, and then add a bunch of DLC maps throughout the entire year. That would be absolutely fantastic in my own personal opinion. When it comes to weapons, I obviously want a wide variety, and if the rumors are true and Black Ops Cold War is going to jump in between different time periods, then I think it would be nice to see a mix of World War II, Vietnam, and even Korean War weapons 
weapons added to the game's multiplayer. Now, obviously, DLC weapons should be added throughout the year with new seasons, and speaking of seasons, there absolutely needs to be events that come back, like the events that we saw in Modern Warfare Remastered and Call of Duty World War II. I'm talking Days of Summer, Shamrock and Awe, Halloween Scream, Winter Siege, and so on. These events were a lot of fun back in the day. They offered time-sensitive rewards and map variants for the corresponding holidays. It was interesting, right? Basically, if there was a holiday, there was a fun event for fans to engage in that would offer them rewards for putting in the time during that event, and I want to see that return with Call of Duty 2020. I basically want COD 2020 to be a game that always has something around the corner, right? Something to look forward to, something new that's coming, all the while still having tons of great content and things to do within the base game that keep us interested in between new seasons, new patches, and new events. Now one final thing I would like to mention here before I end off the video is I truly hope from the bottom of my heart if Black Ops Cold War is good that it be the final Call of Duty game to release for a couple of years. I've talked about this a number of times in the past. I feel as though they should take a break from releasing annual titles in the Call of Duty franchise. And if you guys haven't heard, it's been rumored that a whole new map is going to be coming to Warzone to showcase Black Ops Cold War content. Basically, there's going to be the Modern Warfare map and then the Black Ops Cold War map, right? If that's going to be the case, they should basically just decide to support Modern Warfare 2019 and Black Ops Cold War together, along with Warzone, of course, for the next couple of years. I think that would be the best way to go about things. This would give players a reason to actually grind content, right? They would have a lot of things to do and earn in the game, and so long as they keep adding new content to the game over the course of the coming years, I feel so fans would be really excited for that. I mean, instead of releasing a new Modern Warfare game in 2021, which is the current rumor, they should just continue to update the current Modern Warfare title like they've been, and then of course also update Black Ops Cold War post-launch. I mean, the different studios are working on these games, why not have each individual studio working on their own game and supporting them post-launch while also connecting those games and those universes via the Warzone Battle Royale game? That would make a ton of sense in my own personal opinion. They could have these two juggernaut titles that would basically be the new backbone of the Call of Duty series, alongside Warzone, of course. And we did learn in Activision's investors call today that they are literally making money hand over fist with microtransactions and in-game sales right now. Warzone is blowing up, Modern Warfare 20. 2019 is reportedly the most popular and successful Call of Duty in the history of the franchise, so they're making tons of money from these in-game sales, so why not continue on with that with Modern Warfare 2019? Warzone, and then Black Ops Cold War. I would personally like to see Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare 2019 be the only COD games to be out for the next couple of years, but then again, it may be a bit early to be saying that because we haven't even seen a proper trailer for Black Ops Cold War as of right now. So again, going back to it, if the game is actually good and fans actually enjoy it, that's what they should do. They should basically just make it so they support those two games for the next couple of years as compared to pumping out new games every single year. But of course, that's probably a very controversial opinion, and I would love to hear what you guys think about that down in the comment section below. What do you personally hope to see with Black Ops Cold War? What are some things that should or should not be in the game in your personal opinion? Leave your thoughts and feedback down in the comments. Be sure to leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.